In this series, we're going to learn how to use Ansible. So Ansible is a provisioning configuration management software, meaning it can provision our servers, install our software, and generally make sure that servers are in the state that we want them to be in. So I'm going to show how to get started with Ansible, and then in other screencasts, we'll get more complicated with um, some more real world usage of it. So to begin, we actually need some servers to provision. So I've logged into my DigitalOcean account, and here I'm just going to create a few servers for us to use. So before I even begin there, I need to add an SSH key into my DigitalOcean account. This is going to let me add an SSH key into every DigitalOcean server that we create here, which will give Ansible the ability to actually log into the server and provision them. So the first thing I need to do is go into this server. So this is just a Vagrant server I have, and it's where I'm going to install and run Ansible. So the first thing I need to do here is create a key that will allow this virtual server I'm in right now communicate with the DigitalOcean droplets we're about to create. So that is just an SSH key gem. Type, I'm going to do RSA. I'm going to do 40, 96 bytes. Let's do a comment with my email. And finally, the file is going to be named, I'm just going to name it ID Ansible. And in fact, I'm going to copy this. I'm not run it yet. First, I'm going to go into my SSH directory, and then I'll run that. Do an empty key phrase. Great, OK. So now I need to get the public key into DigitalOcean. I'll just do it the simplest way. Good old copy and paste. SSH key. Let's add an SSH key. We'll just name this Ansible example. Great, so now any server I create inside of DigitalOcean, I can assign this Ansible example key, and I'll be able to log in from this virtual server. All right, just add some droplets. I'm just going to do some of the cheapest, call this Ansible 1. I'm going to do any of this. I'm going to do Ubuntu, do Ubuntu 14.04, 64-bit. I'm going to add the Ansible example. And I'm just going to do this two more times to create a total of three droplets. All right, so we can see here that my three new servers are created and active, and they each have a unique IP address. So let's make sure that we can log into them. So starting back here, we know that I have the public key that I created here, the ID Ansible public key on each of the three DigitalOcean droplets that we just created. So I should be able to log in. So I'll do SSH, and I'll specifically say which SSH key we want to use, ID Ansible. Each of these will have a username of root by default, and let's just try one of these IP addresses. Do I want to connect? Yes. Great, I'm in. So we know the server is going to be able to connect to the three droplets. So the next step is to install Ansible so we can start using it to provision these three new servers. So let's do that. So the first thing I want to do to get Ansible is to install the repository. So that repository is just Ansible, Ansible, and it's the officially supported PPA provided by Ansible. Once that's added, we can update our cache. And then we can install Ansible. Great, now we can make sure Ansible is installed. Yep. So the next thing to do for Ansible is to configure it. But first, I want to make sure we know what we're doing here. So I'm logged into a Vagrant virtual machine right now uh, with Ubuntu, but the operating system doesn't really matter. The point is, is that this server I'm logged into right now has Ansible on it. The droplets we created do not. These are completely fresh servers with nothing installed and nothing added to them. This is actually a key point with Ansible, because Ansible is agentless. And what this means is that we do not have to install an agent on the servers we're provisioning. Instead, Ansible uses SSH to log into the servers and perform all the operations it needs to. The only dependency on the servers is that it has Python and that it's able to connect via SSH. 
Python luckily comes with just about every Linux distribution. DigitalOcean and most distributors all come with the ability to access their servers via SSH. So what do we need to do here to get Ansible to work? Well, we just need to start configuring it. So on Ubuntu, we will have an Etsy Ansible directory. And this directory will contain a example host file and an Ansible configuration file. So the Ansible configuration file is just the main configuration. And we don't need to edit anything there yet. So I'm just going to leave that alone. But we have this host file. And this host file is an example inventory. And an inventory in Ansible is just a collection of web servers for us to perform operations on. And you can see we can group them by things like web servers, database servers. We can do fancy things like ranges of servers and a few other examples like that. So what I'm actually going to do is move the host file out of the way so we don't accidentally try to use this one. Let's call it the original. And then we'll create a new host file. And I'm just going to create a group called web. And I'll put the three IP addresses that we have in there. So now Ansible is going to use this file for its inventory. And it's going to just try to connect to these three web servers to perform operations on them. Great. OK, so we're all set to start using Ansible. So the first thing I'm going to do is just show using some arbitrary commands. And then we can get a little more complex. So let's start with that. Let's say we want to run a command on every server that we have configured. And this is already kind of a powerful idea. Instead of SSHing into a server individually, we can just use Ansible and run one command on every server at the same time. So we we'll do that. So we're going to use Ansible. And we're going to define actually all items in the inventory. I could define web specifically, but I'm just going to use all for now. And I'm going to use a module, the dash m flag, and the ping module. And this will just run ping on the servers, just like I did here. So we can do Ansible, all inventory servers, the module ping, and that's it. I'll have access. Um, oh, actually, I need to define the user root. So I'm logged in right now as user vagrant. And Ansible will try to use that user on these new servers. However, that user doesn't exist on these new droplets. So I'm just going to use their user root, which is the only user currently on these three servers. So we have this error here. And this is actually an SSH error. So what's happening is that this is not able to find the correct private key that we used. So um, we can see this if I just try to SSH into it right now. I'll just do this one. And it's trying to do a password by default, except I have an SSH key I wanted to use, which is why before you saw me use the SSH key we wanted to connect with specifically, right? ID Ansible. So we need to make sure that Ansible knows how to do that. So Ansible-H for help. And this has a private key option, so we can set the private key file to use. So let's do that. So Ansible, all servers, the module ping, dash u root, and private key equals my SSH directory ID Ansible. So because Ansible works based on your preferred state, we get a response of whether or not Ansible has changed anything. And this is part of Ansible operations being idempotent, meaning you can keep rerun the same command over and over again, and you'll always end up with the same state. So in provisioning management, you will typically tell your provisioning manager what state you want your servers to be in when it's done, and then the server has to do work based on the current state of the system to get it to the desired state when you're done. That means if it's already in the desired state, Ansible won't do anything because it's already there. In this case, ping never actually changes anything. It just performs an operation ping. So change will always be false when we run ping. So we can run any arbitrary command on our service this way. So say we wanted to do well, say we wanted to ping the server. I'm not going to do a more complex example, but say we wanted to do ping each server or you know, and wrap the output to do something specific with it. So we could actually do the shell module, and that lets us perform any old command. 
So just for an example, I want to ping three times localhost. Whoops, of course, had a key and the user root. Great, okay, so I pinged and I did a count of three times, that's the dash C3, each server. So we got the result of that. And it was just pinging localhost, so it just gets this localhost IP address back. All right, so let's do something real on the server now. Say we want to install Nginx. And to do that, we usually would do something like get, app get install dash y Nginx. However, we want to run this on all three of the servers. So if we only use the knowledge we had so far, we know we would do all servers, the shell module perhaps, we would pass it the argument, um, you know, something like sudo apt get install dash y nginx. And then of course, you know, user root and private key. But I'm actually not gonna run this stuff. This isn't really the best way to run an arbitrary command on the server. This is basically breaking impotence in that we will run any command here, but Ansible doesn't know what command you're running, and so it's not gonna do any checks to know if you reached your desired state. In other words, we're just running arbitrary commands. We're not actually using Ansible as it's meant to be used here. So let's do that. If I wanna install Nginx in all these servers, I wanna be able to tell Ansible the desired state I want. In other words, I want Nginx to be installed. I want it to be the latest version. So we're actually gonna use the apt module here. And the apt module is just one that runs apt-get. So we want to do the package nginx. We want its state to be the latest. This could also just be simply installed, but I want to have it set to the latest. And then I'm actually going to tell it to update cache, which is just going to say do a sudo apt-get update. I'll set this to true instead of yes, actually. The apt-get command, and it's going to install nginx on all three servers, and then it's going to get back to us and tell us what it did. And I just keep forgetting user root and private key equals ID Ansible. All right, great. So we actually got a dump of a bunch of output here. And this is just all the stuff that happens when it installs Nginx. So reading the package list, it did app get update. And then in here, if we actually wanted to inspect it, we'll see that it's installing a new version of all our stuff. But the really important stuff here is that there's no standard error output. We have standard output and changed is true. So if Ansible knew that Nginx was not installed and it knew it had to change stuff in order to get it there. So now we actually have Nginx installed in all of our servers. Great, and we actually can see the default Nginx page on, on all three of these. Beautiful. So that's the basics of getting started with Ansible. In the next screencast, we'll talk about using playbooks and then we'll organize our playbooks into roles and finally, we'll build up to having a fully orchestrated provisioning of these three servers.